Hey guys, welcome back to the Ramsey Custom Shop. This is Gary, and we're working on the uh, Jones and Lamson number three turret lathe. Uh, just starting to do some uh, restoration work on it, and my thought was we'll get these little, you know, small things taken apart, cleaned up, you know, fix whatever's wrong with them, get them, uh, you know, all the gunk and crap out of them, uh, painted, and and then back ready to go on, or we're actually back on it, uh, and get everything that's sort of like external to it completed uh you know one step at a time until we get to the main you know the main turret and ram and you know cross slide and the the table and and all that um so we're gonna do the tool post here today and this thing was in pretty decent shape it was kind of locked up when i first got it 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 uh but just a little bit of work it, it freed up and would start to ratchet on its own but we'll get it even freer and get it cleaned up here but Anyway, you can see underneath the bottom of it, this lathe has uh, had coolant on it. And uh, I think it's probably pretty common for something like this, you know, with coolant uh, to get corroded and so forth. But the good news is it's mostly just, you know, sort of an oily, watery mix under there and not in, not in too bad a shape. Uh, we're able to get it, you know, get it cleaned up with no, uh, no, you know, deep pitting or corrosion or, or anything like that. So, so it had some large T slots in there or T nuts that basically span the length of the slot. Um, it all looked like it was shop made stuff, you know, and I think this is a universal table they give you here and, um, you know, you can fit up whatever you want on it. I might be wrong on that, but it, it's kind of what it looked like to me. So now we're over on the bench and um, there were a couple of these uh, nuts that got, you know, mushroomed out on the on the bottom of them where they went against the tool and um, were kind of giving me a little bit of a fit getting out of there. I was just trying to clean some of it up with a drill there, you see. Um, and eventually I had to actually uh, take a little grinder um, and the file I had wasn't really doing it. Um, so I had to take a little grinder and, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, taper out that mushroom on the bottom of it to get this one out of there. But um, we were able to get it, get it out and get it going. And then uh, I, what I did was I took a tap and, you know, cleaned up every single hole and being up against the, uh, you know, the tool post there, I, I didn't have room to uh, get a tap wrench in, but I, I could have done this at a later point when I had it all apart and used a tap wrench. But any, anyway, um, just used a, a, an adjustable wrench here and definitely the threads were you know needed some work for sure they they were you know had grit and grime and crap in them uh, as well as uh, you know uh, just kind of boogered up a little bit so here taking the the bottom inspection plate off of it and you can see there's just a lot of you know gunk and grime as you might imagine but you know maybe in the grand scheme of things not as much as uh, you know you might you might think so I was trying to figure out this uh, the spline shaft on this and the the top part of the splines were were kind of chewed up a little bit and it was giving me a hard time getting this apart and um i wanted to use that hammer and and you know and start tapping up underneath it but i i kept my level head and just kept at it with a screwdriver kind of working it up on both both sides i mean i could have probably put some kind of a puller on there to get that to pull right up on it um but you know was able to just um, keep working it and, uh, and get it off of there. So I've got a manual for this thing and it, it, it's a different design. The year model that my manual is for this, this, uh, tool post didn't look anything like it. So I don't know if, if this is an aftermarket tool post or it is a Jones and Lampson or what, but there was a bearing in there that you saw that uh, the bearing was dry, but it 
seemed to be free. It, it was it didn't have any clunkiness to it. It seemed to operate smoothly. So I just cleaned it up and and reused it and and um, filled it full of oil. I was guessing that it didn't need to be greased since it was dry from from original. Um, and there is a little oiling tube that you'll see at at some point in it that that you open up and it feeds oil down in there. So anyway, we're just uh, getting the rest of it, getting the shaft pulled out. The shaft, you know, has some not scoring or, or deep wear or anything, but it had some discoloration where, you know, the main forces were on the shaft. Uh, so over here, just, uh, you know, getting a, a degreaser, ran over all of it, a scotch bright pad with degreaser, just kind of getting all the gunk and grime and whatnot out of it. Um, and it was cleaning up pretty nice. Now, this thing had paint on it originally, so I, I repainted it. Uh, the paint was all pretty much gone off of it. There was some paint on there. But the casting, you know, looked to be in, in good shape. Now, before I uh, started painting, I did a lot more cleanup on it than I showed there. I, I continued to clean it with uh, with acetone and, um, you know, some brushes and Scotch-Brite just to really try to, you know, get the, the oil-soaked stuff off of it. So uh, here you see we're kind of set up. I had several other pieces off of it as well that I painted. One of them was the lamp uh, that's a really neat piece that goes up on top of the electrical box and swings over on over the chuck so you can kind of see what you're doing. So uh, I'm using epoxy primer here um, and I, I uh, showed you the you know spray and all that. Um, you can see we're generating, uh, you know, I might have been running a little bit too much pressure there. Um, I also had that epoxy thinned down with, with acetone, but um, I just showed you the spray and the epoxy. I came back over it with a couple coats of the base that I'm using and clear, but I didn't show you that just to, because I didn't want to, you know, I try not to film too much of the painting because it, I don't want the overspray getting all over the camera and, and so forth. But you can see the blue parts and, you know, and I did go with a full gloss clear on it. Um, I think the full gloss clear really is a lot slicker surface and less absorbent. It seems like the, the matte clear that I have, you know, doesn't wipe off as good. Like if you get grease or anything on it, um, it tends to want to absorb and smear instead of like the, the full gloss clear, man. You get anything on there at all and it just wipes off so clean and smooth. So we're just, you know, getting it all back together here. Uh, you know, using the oiler there to get oil everywhere, just wiping it in. And there was a few areas that I went back and just kind of cleaned up one last time with oil um, and then re-oiled it again, you know, and making sure to get lots of oil everywhere, all over the shaft, so that all the surfaces were, you know, were full of, full of oil. So again, just oiling up that bearing that goes down in there, or actually that was the uh, little gear, ratchet and gear assembly that, that went in there. And after that goes in, there's a spring uh, with a screw that went into the side of it. And that screen, spring, I think, you know, is what applies the pressure on a little detent that goes in there. There's actually two different detents. Yeah, and this, this part here is, is a spring-loaded, you know, ratcheting detent as well that um, quite a bit of pressure on that spring that and the spring and the detent had to go all the way back in that little hole um, while you span, spun it around. And so, like you said, I forgot the bearing there. And uh, now we got it going back. So I tried some tape and to hold that thing in, and that didn't really work. So I just went slow with it and, and, you know, held it in with my finger there to get it in. We just, you know, this is not a production job. We don't need to do a hundred of them. So even though it didn't really go that fast, it wasn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. And then the little, uh, I don't know what you call this boss that goes back on it, but it fits on the splines as well. And that's what the actual ratcheting detent swivels around and locks into. So again, that thing had to be pushed all the way in while you got that thing started. So
So here we are. I, I didn't show this on camera, but I uh, did a lot of work on uh, cleaning out the T-slots and getting those, you know, really cleaned up. They were in, in pretty rough shape. Um, but I spent probably a couple hours on those. And uh, here we are setting the uh, tool post back on there. I got the T-slots all cleaned up. I got them all good. And uh, we're just uh, getting everything aligned to get this bolt back on. So one thing I didn't show, but um, that the, the ratcheting handle uh, came with the, uh, or was missing the, the knob that goes up on the handle. And the, uh, the threads in the actual handle were half inch 20. So when I went on Big Master, they had a couple of different options. And one of them was this brass uh, knob. So I ended up buying that and I made a little uh, stud and a spacer out of some, out of a half inch bolt I just cut apart. And uh, so um, I don't know what you guys think about the, the brass ball. It, it, I'm not sure about it, but um, anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this and we'll see you.